Holding the attention of a whole group of students in front of you during a lecture is difficult. Holding the attention of a whole group of students in front of you on a computer screen is even more difficult. Trying to hold the attention of both in-person students and remote students during a whole group lecture feels nearly impossible. And that is why I don't teach my lessons during hybrid learning that way. And that is why I have opted for a self-paced model of instruction that allows me to spend more time working with small groups or individuals during the class. Howdy, ladies and gents. My name is Tom, and if you're new here, my channel is all about helping middle school STEM teachers design an engaging classroom experience for their students and a fulfilling teaching experience for themselves. I'm going to be sharing my middle school math lesson plan process, but the principles of this self-paced model could be applied to virtually any classroom. The big picture of my lesson plans is first, students watch short video lessons that I have recorded that walk them through guided notes that I have provided. Second, students practice the things that they learned in their lesson. And third, students take a super short focused assessment on that topic. This is something that I've been experimenting with in years past with the flipped classroom model and other video lessons, but was really kind of organized and structured in a way by an organization called the Modern Classrooms Project. And they've got a free course on how to do this. And I went through a lot of that to get me a ton of ideas. And I'll link to the free course down in the description if you're interested in this model. So let's take a look at one of my recent lessons on multiplying rational numbers. So my starting point with these lesson plans is really taking some of the actual plans and guided notes from previous years and then figuring out how much can I trim away so that they still get this learning objective? How much can I take out? Let me take out as much as possible while still trying to hit the objective. So maybe in the past where we had three different example problems that we went through, now we're only doing one because they can at least go back and rewatch that one, but I need to make that example problem a good one. And so I start looking through the notes and I try to decide, okay, I'm not gonna, I know that I'm not gonna make one full video covering these entire notes because it's just so much more to digest. It's nice to have like a short video looking at one section and then you move on to the next section and then you move on and then you can kind of have like those natural stopping points. And so I look through and I'm like, okay, how much How much can I actually cover in, in five minutes or less? Um, and then where's a the natural breaking point? So for me, I would think that this opening problem where I actually give the students the, the solution here uh, of what the product of these two mixed numbers would be. Um, and then I ask them, like, how would someone arrive at that solution? Uh, because I know if I just ask them this question, be like, what do you think? They're going to say two times negative four is negative eight. One times two is two and three times five is 15. And they're like, wait a minute, but that's not the answer. And so it like forces them to come to grips with like their original thinking of what to do is probably wrong. But let me see, what can I do? to try to get there. And my plan is to actually fill in these notes in the video lessons and students can fill them in as well. So I start by making a copy of, of the notes and then just calling it the key. I had another version. That's why I called this one one and I call this one the key. And then I save it. All the, the writing that I do is going to go on this key version. And so I get ready to record a video and I'm just going to do one video for this opening problem. And so I use an app called Loom um, and it has this little extension that you can click right here and literally just start uh, recording. And you can even see me right here. I can change my, my camera. I'm going to turn my camera off because I'm also recording my camera on a different app and I don't want it to lag. But you can move your photo here or you can even just get rid of it by hitting this little X. I actually keep my, my little face in there just to have a connection with the students. And often I'll look up from the work and look at the camera like I'm doing right now, which is literally like a screencast tutorial. This was a little fancier because it's on YouTube just to be able to make that connection. And so I record a lesson. You say where you want to actually record. I usually do the window and then say it's the Chrome window just in case I switch tabs. Click share. It's counting down. This is your lesson on the opening. Hooray. And then immediately I've got a link to share with students. You can see right here. This is your lesson on the opening. Yay. All right. So the lesson is already ready to go now. This les video lesson, I don't have to download it. I don't have to upload it to YouTube or anything. It's got a link right here. And so I copy that link. This video is just for this opening part. I'm going to do a separate video for the quick review of the multiplying fractions. And so what I like to do is instead of just saying, watch this video and then linking it right there, because it's incredible how easily, even though you've explained that these are videos to watch, students will just do this problem and never watch the video. And they just 
go on? Like, oh, I'm supposed to watch the video? So I want to make it as obvious as possible. I'm gonna actually insert a big button uh, by clicking on insert new drawing. Uh, you can just go to shapes and you can go to this little button right here like this. Uh, watch video one. Uh, you can make it all fancy. And now they've got this big old button that if I click on it and then I do command K or click on, click on this insert hyperlink and then I paste the link to that Loom video and click apply. Now when they click on that, they're gonna see, they're, hopefully they don't watch it in here. This is your lesson on the opening, <laughs> hooray! Uh, stop, stop. <laughs> hopefully they actually open it up in a new window right there. Um, and, and then sometimes I will say in the video, I want you to try this problem before you see how I do it in the video. So pause the video now and try the problem. And I try to be really animated and fun and bring my energy to it because I'm competing with like YouTube and I'm trying to be interesting and like make it like they actually want to watch the video. Sometimes my little puppet makes an appearance. It's, it's a good time. I do that video, then I scroll down and then I record another video. I copy and paste this button so I don't have to recreate it. And then I just change the link, double click on it and then you can just change it to video two, save and close. Make sure you change the link though. Um, you can edit the link and then paste the new one there to your new Loom video. And then this is what it ends up looking like. This is the actual notes that I ended up giving with my students right here. Um, you can see that each one is linking to a, a different Loom video. And then we get to the progress tracker. Let's see what the progress tracker is. So the progress tracker is a way for the students to notate as they are completing the lesson. This whole self-paced, it helps for me to know where they are. And so if I'm Jeff and I just finished the notes, I'm gonna put a little X there and I know, okay, now I need to go ahead and start the Khan Academy. Whenever I'm done with that, I put a little X right there. And then I'm gonna talk about these must do's and should do's and aspire to do's in a second. Maybe Jeff, Lily, and Tony are all done with the notes and they're all working on the Khan Academy. If they all see that, they can say, hey, Jeff, are you working on the Khan Academy? I'm kind of stuck on it too. And it promotes that that collaboration, which is something that I was worried about with doing this was like, how much are the kids gonna be collaborating? They're just gonna be watching the videos and then they're just not gonna be interacting as much as they used to in my class. It's harder to get them to collaborate during hybrid learning though. Um, and sometimes I will put them in breakout rooms depending on where everybody is at and some of the natural collaborations will happen. It happens a little bit more naturally in the classroom because students can say like, I'm stuck on this Khan Academy and someone's like, oh, which one, which one are you doing? Yeah, I was stuck on that too. And those conversations happen. Some people don't like that this is public. Um, what I do uh, with this is I project this at the beginning of class and say like, hey, you should have your notes completed by today. Um, you're working on the Khan Academy and the must do's if your notes are not completed, you are behind. But if you have done it, but just haven't filled in the tracker yet, go ahead and do that. So it kind of just gives a little bit of an out of like, well, maybe they just haven't filled the tracker in yet. And then I will meet individually with them once we start and say like, hey, Deep D, are you, where are you at in this? Are, you done, are your notes completed? Can you share your screen? Let me see what you have so far. And if she doesn't have anything, then I've had students say like, okay, why don't you stay in this breakout room? But just to help you keep yourself accountable, why don't you just keep screen sharing? So that way, if I hop in, I could see what you're working on and hopefully we can get these notes done so you can start in the Khan Academy. I'm trying to let them know, like, I'm here to support you. I want to see you succeed. It's not about like a gotcha moment or anything like that. So let's take a look at must do's. Now, if we scroll down, there's the link to the Khan Academy and then it tells them fill out the progress tracker now. And then the discussion problems, they used to be called discussion problems because we used to talk about all of them after we finished a lesson, but that was before COVID-19. And now I should probably just call them problems because we don't talk as much as a class about these specific problems. The way that I have solved the problem of some students getting ahead and some students falling behind or the students that are perpetually behind and not completing enough of the work is I've kind of built in this differentiator uh, in, in how many points you get and how much of the work you actually have to do to get those points. So the must do's is like, I want everyone, everyone should be able to get through this. I want everyone to get through these three problems. And if you fill in the notes and you get these three problems, you can get 22 out of the 25 points on these notes. These notes aren't a huge grade, but they are for a grade to just at least let me see 
what are they putting in here in the are they filling in the notes are they actually doing the work and I tell them you can do your work on paper and then take a picture of it and just put it in the Google Doc if that's easier also in my instructional videos since I know a lot of students don't have a printer at home I go through the whole insert equation and show them how to build out some of these equations and answers so that, that way they can actually fill in their notes because it's not gonna be very helpful if they see me filling in the notes and I'm using like a nice tablet and and they don't have that they're like I don't know how I'm gonna make that fraction or something like that and so they can just take pictures of their paper or do it digitally and then if you finish the must do's you fill out your progress tracker let's go back to the progress tracker let's say Lily has completed the Khan Academy and she's completed the must do's and so I wanted to make sure that students were able to see if they got the answers right and so I have a loom video of the key for each problem. Each problem has its own key video. You can see this one's two minutes. Problem number one, discussion must do number one. And then I walk through how to do it. You can see how I've got, and like I even made a mistake on there. If you make a mistake on a video, that is okay. If it's a huge mistake, re-record it. If it's a small mistake, you can even make a little comment. You can see right here, I made a comment on my own video that says that should be 13 times eight equals 104. Uh, I did 11 times eight. I was thinking, I don't know what I was thinking, but I made a small mistake. And so that was actually really cool because students were like, Tom, I think you made a mistake. And I, instead of saying like, what? What are you talking about? I say like, like, oh, what did you find? And so I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you were confident in your answer and you saw that I actually made a mistake and they like that because I'm, I'm, I'm showing you that I make mistakes and I'm not afraid to make mistakes. But if you make a big mistake, maybe re-record the video. And so after they watch this first video, what I want them to do on the lesson tracker is rate their comprehension on a scale of one to 10. It's not necessarily if you got it right, but after watching the answer key, how confident are you in your answer? Are you like, I'm still completely lost. I'm a one or a two. Or if you're like, oh, I totally get that. I almost got it right, but I see what I did wrong and give yourself a nine or a 10. And I tell them like, this isn't really helpful to you to say you got a bunch of tens and then just copy down all these discussion problems and be like, I got my points done because then when you get to your assessment on these things, you're not gonna have any idea of what to do. And you're just gonna have to retake the assessment and you're you're, you're pretty much failing yourself and not learning. So you're, you're empowering them to take ownership of their learning um, by giving them the decisions and the opportunities to just check their work. And so they would do that for discussion problems one, two, and three. And if they have time, now, they are going to go on to the should do's. If they complete the should do's, they can get up to 24 out of 25 points, fill out the progress tracker, rate themselves on their comprehension, and then an aspire to do. I get a lot of my aspiring to do ones uh, from a website called openmiddle.com, which has got these cool little, like lots of these little things where you like fill in the digits one to nine uh, to make the smallest or the largest number. I really should have just said one or the other because I don't know which one am I supposed to get to make the largest product. Um, and then it gives them a little hint there. I don't give an answer key to this one. If they do do this one, I do want to check in and just ask them, what was your thought process on this? Well, I thought if I had the bigger number on the whole number, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so those are usually kind of fun, a little more time consuming. So it kind of helps those, those high flyers um, that finish pretty quickly. And they're like, oh, okay, this is interesting. This is different. It's not just like more computation problems. And then they go through and finish all of that. And so once they get through all of this, um, I do tell them and I do set due dates. I'm like, your mastery assessment is going to be happening on Tuesday. And so that means on Wednesday, you need to be done with your video notes and everything. And then on Friday, you're going to work in class on your Khan Academy and your must do's. And then if you have time, you can get your should do's or your aspire to do's. So that way you can be ready for the assessment on Tuesday. They still have to take the assessment unless it's just like a situation where I'm like, this student is like really far behind. I'm just going to take a little bit of time uh, to meet with them. And so it's not completely self-paced. It's like self-paced with guardrails, as they say in the Modern Classrooms project. This is an example of the mastery assessment for this lesson. And the way that I structure it is they have to do a loom screencast where they show their work either right here or on paper, uh, and they walk through the problems showing how much they understand it. And so I tell them, if you get the right answer, but the way you talk about it doesn't show me that you actually understand what you're doing and why, you're not going to get credit for it. I want to know, why did you, what did you do first? Well, first I did these, these parentheses because the order of operations, and I know that this means three times the square root of 16, you know, like anyone can learn how to plug one of these things into one of these online calculators and turn out an answer, but hearing them talk about it gives you a very clear clear picture of who understands it and who does it. So they can use their calculators. They can use their notes. If they can make sense of what was going on in the notes and then apply that knowledge to these new problems, that's the whole idea. They are learning this content and they are explaining it and proving that they understand it. And so I try to make it as few questions as possible. They turn those in and then I give them a grade. They can reassess it because I do want to see them excel, but I don't spend too much time on reassessments. If they get a really poor score, then I'll be like, hey, let's check in. Let's talk about 
some of these problems. Depending on the student, sometimes just walking through some of the corrections and giving them a quick example, then I'm like, great, that's your reassessment. Other students, I'll go ahead and give them a more formal reassessment that says like, okay, here's uh, two more problems that I'd like you to do a Loom screencast video kind of walking through and then sending it to me. We have 75 minute classes twice a week during hybrid learning. And typically I'll give them one day to watch the videos and take the notes, another day to work on the Khan Academy and the practice problems, and then one day to work on the mastery assessment, record their screencast and turn it in. The nice thing about doing this and having these videos is now I have them for next year. Maybe I'll make a few modifications, add a video or re-record -re one of the videos, one or two of the videos, depending on how I change the notes. It takes more time the first time you're doing it, but then after that you kind of have this, this archive of learning that you are now free to actually work more one-on-one. -on -one. You're not lecturing to the whole group of students anymore. Then you can work to meet the students where they're at a lot more and your time is completely freed up and you're just checking in. Hey, what do you got? How's it going? Not every student's going to reach out. Sometimes you need to say, hey, can you do a screen share? Can I see what's on your screen? And then moving on to the next person or answering a question here or there. I'm still experimenting with this. I still do have kids that are falling behind and I'm, and I'm trying my best to work with them and meet with them in office hours. And there isn't as much collaboration as I would like, or kind of like those whole group, like aha moments that I would have in some of our classroom discussions previously. But for now it seems to be working. And in the future, I plan to implement more days where it's like, all right, we're pausing on the self-paced and we're gonna do this whole group breakout rooms, everyone's paired up with someone to try to solve a problem. We're gonna come back and talk about it, sort of activities now and then. The idea of creating these video tutorials is daunting to a lot of teachers who have never really filmed themselves. So I created this tutorial on how to create a screencast video lesson super easily, even if you have no experience using a free tool called Loom. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you over in the Loom tutorial.